Okay, good evening and welcome back everyone. Welcome to our Options Education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the Chief Strategist here at Options Play. And today we're here to talk about a topic that I think is probably the most important topic for anyone who is a trader. Doesn't matter whether you're a stock trader, an options trader, futures trader, forex trader, doesn't matter what markets you trade. You know, we've all gone through this process as traders is to is suffering through losses. And some of us have suffered through some very big losses. Some of them suffered through small losses. But these are all part of the learning experience that I say with learning how to trade options. And we're going to go through some of the scenarios that I, as a market strategist of the past 16 years, have seen over and over and over again, patterns that I see with traders that struggle with, with um, growing their accounts, sometimes blowing up their accounts. And as I go through some of them, you may be able to relate to some of them. And today's session is hopefully giving you a better understanding as to what causes it, and also some of the statistics that I think many investors don't understand around, you know, what are the chances of having uh, account blowups? What are the chances of having, you know, a, a significant loss in your portfolio? And how do you go about preventing it more importantly? So those are some of the things we're going to go over here today. So I hope this is helpful. But before we get started, what we are going to discuss is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. So uh, I want to just first talk a little bit about account blowups and kind of what happens, or right? what are the common patterns that I see as a market strategist working with thousands of investors over the years, uh, you know, what I, I have seen that traders do over and over again that cause them to blow up their accounts. Uh, and again, like I said, many of us may be able to relate to some of them. Then I'll talk a little bit about trading psychology, what contributes to uh, these uh, patterns that that um, investors go through. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the golden rule of trading, how we can set rules in place to prevent some of this, and then talk a little bit about the, the difference between linear versus exponential functions and how that contributes to consecutive losses. And this is really where I want to spend some time today. I think a lot of investors have a wrong understanding of the statistics around what are the chances of having five, six, seven, eight losing trades in a row. Um, and then uh, hopefully that'll help you think long-term and what you may need to make in terms of adjustments to your strategy. Uh, and then we'll open this up for Q&A here at the very end. Uh, but the primary thing that I want to help everyone to walk away from today's session is a clear understanding as to how you can grow your accounts by focusing on risk alone. So my name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And we have spent uh, you know, 16 years uh, coaching traders on how to trade uh, the, the markets, understanding the markets, understanding strategy. So I have seen just about every single possible trading strategy, account blow up, success story under the sun. And there is a clear pattern between successful traders and everyone else. And it's not their strategy. A lot of investors think that successful investors have a better strategy than I do. I promise you they don't. Many times they have a simpler strategy than you do. They probably look at fewer things, but what they do have is a very disciplined approach to risk management. And that's what I see most investors that struggle with trading do not have is, is, a, is a disciplined approach to risk management. So today, what I want to really talk through, you know, how you can potentially get access or, you know, build that type of discipline. So let's first talk a little bit about account blowups. And if you could please bring up your chat window at the bottom of your screen, and just please type one into the chat window if you can relate to any of these things, right? So let's look at, you know, the first reason that I see a lot of investors, you know, have severe losses in their portfolio is either they trade too large, and, you know, on a single trade, they simply are putting too much money on the, on to, at risk on a single trade, or they double down when they have a losing position. So a trade is going in the opposite direction they expected to, and you don't want to take a loss, right? So what you do is you double down, you, you buy some more. You think that, oh, it's got to come back now. So if I buy a little bit more and it starts to come back, I'll be able to get myself to break even. And as soon as I get myself to break even, I'll get out. That's a story that we tell ourselves as traders. And many times, 
When we double down, the trade keeps going against us. And now we've risked more than we originally intended. So we are having a much larger loss that we, and I see a lot of ones on the screen, right? So a lot of us can relate to this. And I, and I expected that because as I worked with traders over the years, this is one of the most common themes that I see. The second thing that we tend to see is that you have a string of losses. Whoops, we have a string of losses. You have uh, one loss after another, after another, after another. And we kind of lose faith in our strategy. We, we, we second guess ourselves. We basically say, maybe the strategy that I'm using is not a good strategy and I need to go and find a new strategy. So you either go find a new person to follow, you go start doing research, you do technical analysis, you do fundamental analysis, and you kind of re-engineer your strategy, sometimes completely from the ground up. Sometimes you make some adjustments, but you don't keep at a single strategy. Um, if you can relate to that, please type one into the chat window as well. Um, I see a lot of in traders who, you know, once they have a string of losses, they really lose faith. And instead of continuing with that strategy, they switch to another strategy, hoping that some new strategy that they take will somehow prevent them from having these string of losses. And that's really one of the more critical parts here um, in terms of how you can overcome this. This is the part where for both, the solution to, to it is actually quite simple, but it really takes a lot of time for us to learn how to overcome our emotions and be disciplined in the rules. And that's what I'm gonna walk everyone through here today. So the first one is this human uh, you know, need, if you will, to be right or want to win, right? We all want to win, we all want to be right. And this is part of what makes it so hard for us to let go of a loser. So many times, you know, you have a stock, You've identified the stock is trading in a range. So when it's near the bottom of the range, you think to yourself, oh, this is a great buying opportunity. I can buy this stock from around, you know, uh, three and a half crowns. And I think it's going to rally all the way up to six crowns. That's almost 100% gain. Great investment. So let me go and buy this stock, right? And this could be a stock trade. This could be an options trade. And as soon as you get into the trade, guess what? The stock starts to move lower, right? Doesn't go in the direction you expect it to. You know. Uh, a good trader would say to myself, would say to themselves, I bought the stock because it was near a support level. And now that it's broken that support level, I was wrong and I should, and I should get out of the trade and hopefully take a relatively small loss on this particular trade. Maybe get out here around uh, three and a half, uh, 325 or so, risking, you know, a few, uh, you know, half a crown, if you will, on that trade. But many of us don't do that. Right, we we don't want to uh, basically say we were wrong on this trade. We still we want to make that you know we keep thinking to ourselves we can make a hundred percent gain on this trade. Why don't I just buy a little bit more down here, right? And and if the stock rallies back to let's say five and a half crowns, then I can double my money again, right? So what we do is we double our money. We 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 get into another trade, even though our first trade was absolutely wrong on our analysis. And now we hope that the stock will rally from there. But instead, it doesn't do that again. It keeps moving lower. And many times investors, what they start doing is they just start, they get desperate. They start looking for new reasons as to why they should buy it. They, they look at the, their indicators and they say, okay, well, you know, the indicators are now showing me that I've got some positive divergence, right? Lower low in price, newer, uh, higher low in momentum. So it must mean that the stock is going to rally now. So they buy some more. And many times this is a this is a behavior that we repeat over and over again until we have a, such a large loss in our portfolio that we really can't recover from this, right? So I think many of us can in some way, shape or form, even if it's not exactly like this, relate to this one scenario that causes us to have large losses. And what it, what it contributes to is what I call these large trading losses. If you look at the portfolios of trades, you see a bunch of small winners, a bunch of small losers. This is kind of your portfolio recognizing a strategy. And then all it takes is one slip up, one slip up where we kind of can't wrap our heads around being right uh, or being wrong, that we keep doubling down. And then we have these huge losses in our portfolio that set us back months of trading. And it takes us months, sometimes years, to grind our way back to break even, right? So again, if you can relate to this, please type two into the chat window. Um, and this is really what we see a lot of investors do. Well, the, the good thing about this is that the solution to this problem is quite simple. The problem is your ability to stick to this, right? And this is what we call the golden rule of risk management. And that means that every single trade that you place should never exceed one to 2% of your total portfolio value. 
So that means that if you have, let's say a 250,000 crown portfolio, one to 2% is somewhere between 2,500 and 5,000 crowns. So your goal is that every single time you place a trade, you never exceed these thresholds. If you start exceeding these thresholds, you're going to constantly find yourself in the scenario that I referred to before. And the part of the reason is because small losses, right? When you lose only one to 2% of your total portfolio value on any single trade, those losses are easy to let go of, right? They're small pieces of your portfolio. It's usually when we risk large percentages of our portfolio that we find it harder to let go of a loss because those losses really hurt. They, they are, they're taking a significant portion of our portfolio. So your goal as a trader is to prevent your account from blowing up. And the best way to do that is to trade small. One to 2% of your account per trade. You can trade more trades, but each trade should never contribute to a large loss in your portfolio. Does that make sense? Please type three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And you know, I constantly hear from investors saying, "Hey, I made a really bad trade, right? Uh, you know, or you know, someone else I follow told me a really bad trade, and I lost a large percent of my portfolio." And I always tell investors, it "Wasn't a bad trade. It, there's no such thing as a good or a bad trade. There's only trades that were either too large or too small, right? That's it." There's no such thing as a good or a bad trade. Trades are either winners or losers, that's it. There's no good or bad in it. The question is how much did you risk? So if you ever say to yourself, that was a really bad trade, I lost a lot of money, then it wasn't the trade that was the problem. The problem was how much you risked, okay? Now, I wanna, I wanna take this a little further because I tend to find that this is sort of the, the easy thing to, to fix, right? And this really just comes down to discipline of risking a smaller percentage of your account per trade. But the one part that I see a lot of investors don't have a clear understanding of is you know, how often you have consecutive losses or how often you should, you should expect to have consecutive losses. So if let's say you have a strategy that wins about 50%, and I know some investors will say, no, I win 60% or I win 50, you know, 55% or 70%, whatever that is, um, don't worry about that. But I do tend to find that in the long run, a lot of investors tend to have you know, win rates that are not too far off from 50%. So we're just going to use 50% as a gauge here. But what do you think is the probability of having seven losing trades in a row if you have a 50% win rate? I'm curious to hear your answers. So please type them into the, into the Q&A, into the chat window. What do you think is the probability of having 70, seven losing trades in a row if you have a win rate of about 50%? Um, so I see 7.7. Uh, um, I don't know if, Callie, you mean 0.7% or 70%? Frederick said 40%. Any other guesses? 70%. Okay, so you think there's a 70% chance that you'll have seven losing trades in a row. Uh, Bjorn is saying 0.8%. Um, Hamanshu says 100. Uh, okay, so we've got some answers all over the place, right? We've got as low as 0.8%. Um, which is, and then we have as high as 100%, okay? So the answer is obviously somewhere in between these two numbers. And the question is where, right? I see someone saying 5%, let's go back. Someone said 5%. Um, someone said 0.39%. We do have a 70% here. 16%, right? So, okay, so the answers are pretty much all over the place. The most common answer that I get is 0.8% because what we basically say is um, we're assuming a 0.5% chance of it happening. And basically we raise that to the seventh power, which comes out to be like 0.78% or something like that. Um, and, you know, we basically say, it's kind of like saying flipping a coin, right? Because flipping a coin is a 50% chance of being heads. What are the chances of having seven heads in a row? I think is another way to think about this. And most investors will say, well, 0.5 raised to the seventh power gives you about 0.78%. So those are the, that's the chances of me having um, seven losing trades in a row. And this is probably the most misunderstood statistic of trading because the answer completely depends on how many trades are you actually going to make. 
Because if let's say you are only going to make seven trades in your entire trading career, meaning you're going to make seven trades and then you're going to hang up your 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 um, your belt and you're no, never going to make a trade again. If that is the case, then 0.78% is the correct number. But the reality of trading is that we make lots of trades, right? We don't just stop at seven trades. We might make 100 trades, 200 trades, 300 trades, depending on and how many trades you make determines how likely you're going to have a string of seven losses in a row. So this is where I created a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet basically uh, runs a trial of 200 coin flips. And we're going to use coin flips as, a, as an analogy for a 50% win rate, right? So imagine getting uh, seven heads in a row. That's like the equivalent of seven wins. And what we wanted to track is if we did a thousand trials where we flipped a coin 200 times, how many times did we have, uh, you know, seven heads or tails in a row. Um, and this allows us to get a better understanding as to just how frequently this actually happens. So think about, think about this as if you made 200 trades in a year, right? What are the chances that at some point during that year, you're going to have seven losing trades in a row? That's really kind of what we're asking. Um, because Again, like I said, most investors will think that the, uh, the perceived probability is really low, about 0.78%, because that's 0.5 raised to the seventh powers, you get 0.78%. But when we ran this trial of 200 coin flips, and we did it a thousand times, the actual number of, of times, uh, the number of trials where there were at least seven consecutive losing trades in a row was 54.7%. And we can do this over and over again. We can run these trials over and over again. Each time I run this trial, what you see is that the statistics change a little bit, but they're always around 52 to 55%. It's very stable. What that means is that if you're gonna make 200 trades in a year, you have roughly about a 50, a little over 50% chance that you're going to, at some point during that year, suffer through seven consecutive losses in a row. That's a, you know, that's a pretty high percentage, right? So what that means is that even a good strategy that wins 50% of the time, you are still going to have a 50% chance that you're going to have seven losing trades in a row. And we can do this for other consecutive losing trades in a row. What if what about eight consecutive losing trades in a row? 32%, nine consecutive losing trades in a row, 16%, 10 consecutive losing trades. Now you can start to get to numbers that are more manageable, right? So meaning if you have an 8.8%, what that tells me is that if I make 200 trades every single year, over a 10 year span, I'll have about one year where I'm going to have a 10 consecutive losing trades in a row. Um, Versus uh, almost half the years that I trade, I'm going to have at some point a seven consecutive trades in a row that are going to be losers if I have a 50% win rate. And you can say to yourself, well, my win rate is higher. You can do, you can, the, the, the probabilities will be a little lower. But what I want to show is the difference between what most investors perceive as the, as the potential risk of having seven consecutive uh, losing trades in a row versus the actual number that you're likely going to experience. Does that make sense? Please type four into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Okay, so like I said, these are not statistics meant to emulate exactly what you will expect in your portfolio because this is based on coin flips, right? And trading is obviously not a coin flip, but it just goes to show you that if you have a 50% win rate over a long, over a long enough, um, a large number of trades, you have a very high probability at some point during those string of trades that you're going to come across a consecutive loss. And this really comes down to then, okay, if you risk 1% of your portfolio at a, 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 on a single trade and you have seven losing trades in a row, that's a total drawdown of 7%. Uh, in order to get yourself back to break even, you need a 7.5% return to get back to break even. So if you have seven consecutive lose, losing trades in a row, you need seven and a half consecutive winning trades in a row to get yourself back to break even. Now, like I said, you have about a 50-50% shot of having seven losing trades in a row or seven winning trades in a row. Um, so seven and a half 
is not much uh, different, right? So, but if you risk 2% of your account per trade, you're, you have a total drawdown of 14%. That's going to have, uh, that's going to require 16 and a quarter percent to get back to break even. So you need eight consecutive winning trades to get yourself back to break even. So within these two numbers, these are somewhat manageable, right? But once you get into three, four, 5%, these numbers start getting so large that it's almost impossible to get yourself back to break even. So even at 4%, right, which doesn't sound like a whole lot of your portfolio to risk. If you have seven losing trades in a row, you've lost 28% of your total portfolio. That requires a 39% return just to get yourself back to break even. Then you're going to need about 10 consecutive losing, tr uh, winning trades in a row to get yourself back to break even. So the more you risk per trade, the more difficult it is to get yourself back to break even. If you look at 6%, you're down 42%. That requires a 72% gain to get back to break even. And now you need 12 consecutive wins to get yourself back to break even. Does that make sense? Um, you know, why it's so important to stick to this one to 2% rule is to, is to make it so that you have a chance of getting yourself back to break even because your losses are fairly comparable to what you need to get back to break even versus even at 4% loss, your chances to get back to break even are significantly higher. Please type five into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Um, and so you should at this point ask yourself, how much do you risk on each trade? Do you risk 1%, 2%, 5%, 10%? And ask yourself, how capable am I of getting myself back to break even if I have some of these losses? As you can see at 10%, it's almost impossible to get yourself back to break even. So basically every single, every single year, you have about a 50-50 shot that you're gonna lose 70% and you're gonna need 233% to get back to break even if you're risking 10%, I'm not saying you are, but if you do, that's really the type of, um, you know, that's what you wanna look out for. So, and then you can say, well, what are my chances of having nine consecutive losses in a row? About a 17%, so about one in five years, one in six years or so. If you have a 2% rule, you're down 18%, that requires a 22% return to get back to break even. That's somewhat manageable once every six years or so, right? And you can use this spreadsheet to give you a better understanding as to what is your expected drawdown, how much you can expect to get back to break even, and how difficult it is even at 3% to get yourself back to break even. It becomes very difficult. Um, so this is how you can plan. But I always tell investors, you should always plan in a given year that at some point you're going to have six to seven consecutive losing trades in a row. Um, you know, at a 50-50 win rate, you are almost guaranteed, you have an 80% chance that during that year, you're going to have six consecutive losing trades in a row. Um, and what this tells us to do is to think like an infinite player. And this is really where I turn to a concept that was written by James P. Cars, who was a religious philosopher. And he wrote a book called Finite Versus Infinite Games. And he theorized there are two types of games, finite games and infinite games. Finite games are, are games that have a fixed rules. Uh, the, the game ends at a certain point. And at the end, we declare both a winner or a loser. And these are games that we're all familiar with, right? Like football, basketball, chess. <clears throat> these are games that have rules. And at the end of the game, there is a winner. And your goal when you play these games is to win, right? And a lot of times we think of trading as wins and losses because a lot of investors think about, oh, I, I, I won money on that trade or I lost money on that trade. <clears throat> but if you think about it, that's the wrong game because there is, he also theorized there was a second type of game called infinite games. Infinite games have no agreed upon rules. The game never ends. And there are no winners and losers. There are either players in the game or there are people who drop out of the game because they no longer have enough resources to stay in the game. And this reminds you of certain things like running a business, right? Running a business, there's no just, you can't win at running a business. You're either in business or you're out of business, right? And there's no end, right? There's no, there's no end to running a business. You, it goes on infinite, um, just like a trading uh, account, right? You, you, you never, you don't say like, oh, I'm going to stop trading at this point in time. You 
keep trading. Um, you're constantly trading. It's an infinite game. And when you think about playing an infinite game, you're not worried about winning because there's no such thing as winning. You want to stay in the game. That's your goal to play an infinite game. So when you think about this, with what we just learned before, the chances of having consecutive game, uh, consecutive losses, and what game are you playing? What should you be focusing on when you're playing, when you're trading? You should not be focusing on wins and losses. Um, and, but unfortunately, I see too many investors spend all of their emotional energy focusing on wins and losses. How do I win more often? How do I not lose? The, the problem is not winning and losing. The problem is staying in the game. And how do you, con how do you merge these two theories? It's, it's the first understanding that consecutive losses will occur. No matter how good your strategy is, it has nothing to do with your strategy. If you have a 50% win rate, you're just going to have a consecutive loss. And that are seven, eight consecutive losses in a row. You're definitely almost guaranteed to have at least six losing trades in a row in a given year. You have a 50-50 shot of having seven. You have about a third shot of having eight consecutive trades in a row that are going to be losers. So your goal as a trader is not to prevent it. I see too many investors spend all of their time trying to prevent having consecutive losses. The second they have a string of consecutive losses, instead of sticking with the strategy and, and, and managing risk, they move on to the next strategy because this, this consecutive losses blew up their account. Instead of looking at what, what really was the problem, they focus on something that wasn't the problem and that's a strategy. The strategy is not the problem. Your strategy is fine in the long run. You just couldn't survive the string of losses. So stop trying to prevent consecutive losses. What you can prevent is that when these consecutive losses come, um, come about, and they will come about, you can prevent it from blowing up your account. And by simply applying the one to 2% rule, because if you apply the one to 2% rule, even when you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine consecutive losses in a row, as you can see, this is something that you can recover from versus when you blow up your account, it is almost impossible to recover from. Does that make sense? Please type six into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And this is really the, the, the difference between what I see, the patterns that successful traders have and, and, and everyone else. Everyone else, you know, they trade too large to begin with, so they blow up their accounts frequently. And whenever they have a string of losers, these losers blow such a large hole in their portfolios that they're not able to come back. And instead of continuing to, to trade that same strategy, they give up on that strategy and they go to someone else. They follow a new trader or they find a new strategy. And only to come about you know, three, four, five, six months later or a year later, they have the same string of losses and they lose confidence again. And they constantly go back and find new strategies. The problem is not your strategy. The problem is how you survive these consecutive losses. And again, the, 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 the process for fixing it is really, really simple. It's just risking no more than one to 2% of your account per trade. That's it. That will allow you to survive the consecutive losses. That will allow you to continue trading a single strategy that you know well, that you understand, that you can continue to develop the discipline and, and, and rules around trading. Um, but you have to first be able to survive those downturns. Um, so the best way to do that is by making sure that you have the right risk approach on these strategies. So the options play tool helps you do this. On the options play tool, when you're using the trading tab, at the very bottom of your tool, there is a risk and investment calculator. So the risk and investment calculator, like I said, is the third dot at the bottom of your screen. And when you log into options play, um, let me bring it up. Uh, sorry, I don't have options play up. Let me bring it up. When you use options play for any strategy, um, let me just pull up a, another symbol. Let's take a look at what is moving today. Um, let's look at AstraZeneca, for example. Let's say you wanted to take, uh, wait, no, I wanted to look at AstraZeneca. Um, let's say you wanted to take a bearish view on AstraZeneca because you think the stock is starting to break down below some support levels. I was looking at this today um, and maybe you think this is headed lower. So you wanna buy some put options. Remember, reference this spreadsheet first, right? How much are you risking per trade? So you kind of find your account level here 
and you make sure that you trade the appropriate number of contracts. So let's say you have a 250,000 uh, crown portfolio. So that means you can risk anywhere from 2,500 to 5,000 crowns. If you do that, what you can do is you can use the risk and investment calculator, which like I said here is the third uh, button here on the bottom. When you click on that, you can choose, I want to risk, and you can type in 5,000 crowns. And what this will do is it will calculate the appropriate number of contracts that you can trade. So in this particular case, you can only trade one contract of the call and one contract of the vertical, because as you can see, the max risk here is under 5,000 crowns. So you cannot trade more than one contract. If let's say you have a larger account, you, have 10, you can trade 10,000 crowns. Then you can trade either two contracts of the call or three contracts of the vertical. And as you can see, the max risk here is just under 10,000 crowns. And and this tool is designed to help you stay in your lane so that you can use the risk and investment calculator, click on how much you want to risk, and type in the amount that you can risk and click on calculate. And our tool will calculate for you the number of contracts. And then you can use the PL simulator based on the number of contracts to see how much you can potentially make on the trade and how much you can potentially lose on the trade and know exactly how much you're risking and how much you're losing and know that no matter what happens that you will stay within that one to two percent rule of your account level okay does that make sense please type seven into the chat window if that makes sense to you perfect okay so let's just review what we discussed here today remember when you're trading it's not a game about wins and losses right wins and losses are for basketball chess soccer, those types of games. You're playing an infinite game. There's no winning or losing. Focus on the big picture. And that big picture is how do I stay in business? How do I make sure that I don't blow up my account? Because as long as I don't blow up my account, I can continue trading. Once you blow up your account, you are out of the game, right? So when you're playing an infinite game like trading, focus on the big picture. And you can do that by risking never, never risking more than one to 2% of your account per trade. It's as simple as that. And you really have to remember that consecutive losses in a strategy will happen far more often than you might theoretically think. The, the, you know, when we looked at the difference between what people perceive as the risk of having seven consecutive losses in a row versus the actual uh, chances, it's almost a hundred to one ratio. We think it's about 0.78% intellectually, but the reality is that it's close to about 55%. That's almost a hundred times larger in terms of risk. So they happen far more often than you think. So stop trying to prevent it make sure that you can survive those consecutive losses. Don't try to prevent it because you're not gonna be able to prevent it. Even a good strategy will not be able to prevent it. But, but what you can do is survive those and you can do it by risking no more than one to 2% of your account per trade. And you always wanna make sure that you cut your losers. If, you, if a trade is not going in the direction that you expect it to, let it go. You know, don't get attached to winning because trading is not about wins and losses. Again, infinite game. There's no wins and no losses. There's, there's only either you're in the game or you're out of the game. So stop thinking of them as wins and losses and stop being concerned about having losses. Losses will happen. Just know that because you're trading small, it's only one to 2% of your account. You will survive. If you have still have 98% of the capital that you started with yesterday, guess what? You're still in the game. You can still trading. But if you if you don't, cut your losses and you and you keep adding to them and you and those losses grow larger that's when you have the risk of blowing up your account and you're no longer in business you no longer can survive and you have to deposit more capital before you can trade so account blowups will end your trading career so don't let that happen manage your winners not your losers and if you want to look at the 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 spreadsheet, I created this link so that you can download the spreadsheet. You can play around with it. Um, you can test out the different, um, uh, you can rerun it. You can run more trials if you'd like to, play around with it if you want to, so you can see the actual chances of surviving about these types of strategies. So with that, that covers what I wanted to share with you here today. I hope that this was helpful in giving you a different view into kind of how traders, you know, deal with their emotions and kind of what I have learned in my working with thousands of traders, kind of the different patterns that emerge and what contributes to these um, losses and how successful traders think. They think very differently. They don't think about wins and losses. They think about how do I survive to trade another day? And they do it by managing their risk. 
Um, so if you want to learn more about, you know, the things that I teach here, whether it's beginner topics, intermediate or advanced courses, you can uh, access them all here through trade.optionsplay.com slash Nordic EDU. I'll post that link into the chat window here as well. And for those of you that are watching today, if you don't have access to Options Play, which is the tool that calculates the number of contracts for you, this tool right here, you can sign up for this tool for free courtesy of the NASDAQ Nordic team at optionsplay.se, which I will also post the link into the chat window. So all three links now here are in, oh, whoops, sorry. I think that I didn't send that to everyone. I apologize. Um, so the three links I'm gonna send to you in the chat window now, uh, it's the link to the spreadsheet, it's the link to the options education, as well as signing up for Options Play if you do not already have an Options Play account that is available at optionsplay.se, um, where you can sign up for this free tool. Um, it's available in both English and Swedish, the tool itself. So with that, that covers what I wanted to share with you here today. At this point, what I'll open the, this up is for Q&A. If anyone has any questions, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A section, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I have time for here today. Any questions? Um, if there are no questions for today, I will just want to say thank you, everyone, for taking the time. Oh, here's a few questions coming in. Uh, how do you differentiate between a losing trade and a trade that might just need a bit more time to and to roll? So, Oscar, um, you know, it, it, you should always look at why you got into the trade, right? So, for example, in my in my uh, example here, right? Um, I got in this, let's say this initial trade was traded because we were back at a near support level, right? So if we got into a trade because of the support level, and let's say two months later, the stock was still trading around the support level, and you think that you just need more time, then you can go back and say, was the original thesis that I had that this support level was going to hold, is that still true? If the original thesis was still true and you still just need more time, then I think a role might make sense, right? You're just saying that, hey, I got the timing right, I, I got the timing wrong, but I got the I, my thesis is still true. Um, that's one possibility of determining when it's time to roll. But if let's say this trade immediately broke the support level, um, you know, my thesis that the support level was going to hold was wrong, that is not a reason to roll and buy yourself more time. That is simply my trade was wrong. I need to get out of that trade and simply take a loss. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't take the second trade, right? You can take a completely separate trade based on something completely different, right? Maybe you think to yourself now that, you know, there's some positive diversions here uh, from the momentum indicators, but this is a completely separate trade. This should be completely separate from the first trade. You should not be entering this trade because you have a losing trade and you're trying to get yourself back to break even. You should be entering the second trade because it's a whole separate trade on your own. Does that make sense? I hope that answered your question. Um, Frederick, you're very welcome. Uh, Leaf is saying the problem with just one to two percent of a trade is that trade cost, for example, for Avanza is going to be high by the small account. So, Leaf, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, the smaller the account, the more commissions eat into your cost. Um, but that is why I do advocate for 
uh, you know, some of the lower cost brokers, um, especially the lower cost brokers that allow you to trade multi-leg, such as interactive brokers. It allows you to trade multi-leg and the trade costs are substantially lower. Can you diversify amongst different types of trades to reduce your overall risk? You absolutely can and you should. And not only should you diversify around strategy, you should diversify sectors. You should, you mean, if you just have all your trades loaded up in tech stocks, right? Then I would say that it's, it's like trading one very large you know, trade, right? Meaning just because you're risking 2% of your trade, but if you have 10 trades that are all in the tech sector and they're all long, then it's just like risking 20% kind of on a single trade. So you have to think about that, right? So you should spread out your trades across different sectors, some long, some short. Um, that's going to help you also diversify some of your risk. So yes, absolutely. Not only strategy, but also sector and also long short. Any other questions? Um, if there are no other questions, I just want to thank everyone for your time this evening. Thank you so much. I know that you know people are just kind of getting back from their summer vacations. I hope that this has, was helpful in giving you a better understanding as to how to think about risk. Because again, like I said, this is probably the most important lesson to learn for, for traders when you're first starting out, um, or rather just anyone. It doesn't matter what you're trading. Um, this is what you need to learn. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys have a great trading day.